Good evening, everyone. This is Ninghui Kim Kong Sai, and you're watching GCN English News Edition. First, the headlines. Istan Naga People's Organization opposes scrapping of free movement regime. Kuki in B Manipur clarifies on meeting Home Minister with various tribal bodies. ITLF and Joint Student Body Lamka warns against the amazing power line to Lamka. News in detail. The Eastern Naga People's Organization, EMPO, has announced opposition to the scrapping of the free movement regime, FMR, from the Indo Myanmar border. In a statement issued through its media cell, EMPO declared that. The people of Eastern Nagaland would not allow any move to settle their harmonious way of life or bring stumbling block to the relations they share with their brothers and sisters. It strongly urged the central government to desist from focusing only on one aspect of any given situation, but take a balanced decision, keeping in mind the welfare of the people they governed, underscoring that good governance meant meeting the aspirations of the people rather than imposing dictates. EMPO claimed that it was a fact well understood by all policy makers and powers that be of India that the boundary demarcations between India and Myanmar was only an imaginary line that was unitarily decided and drawn by then Prime Minister Zawaharlal Nehru and Yunu in 1953, without the concerns of the Nagas, which have resulted in artificial separations of the Naga people and their lands across the international border, acknowledging that it appeared logical for outsiders to think of the people living across its side of the imaginary line as people of two different countries. The organizations, however, pointed out that nothing could be farther from the truth. EMPO stated that the so-called international boundary between India and Myanmar, especially along the stretch of Eastern Nagaland arbitrarily, ran right in the middle of Naga homeland, the end result being that close relatives and families related by blood got automatically alienated from each other. So the tracks of the region, especially Konyaks, Kyanyung, Gans, Kim Kyungs, and Tikris, Face untold difficulties in moving freely during festivals or that of near and their ones across the border and in doing cultivations. Their only source of livelihood, besides the, the added problems of red tap and other issues faced by those people to them, left powerless to raise their voice against their rights being trampled. The EMPO mentioned that the people had to silently enter the curtailment of the free movement and the feeling of being so near, yet so far with their near and their ones for more than half a century. ENPO regretted that all these years, India and Myanmar did not give a thought on taking joint corrective steps to remove this man-made hurdle, causing sufferings to the people of the region. Though border pass was still mandatory for anyone to cross over to the other side, the ENPO acknowledged that the introductions of FMR by the central government in 2018 as part of its act, its policy, came as a welcome respite for the affected people, at least to some extent. The FMR granted that anyone living within 16 km from the border on either side could venture into its other territory without the need to provide visa, adding that its visit from its side with valid border pass could last for two weeks at a stretch. However, the organization said the government's decision to abrogate FMR came as a complete shocker for the people. It recalled that the people of Eastern Nagaland have vehemently opposed even the centrist decision to fence the border in 2011. The EMPO suggested that the India and Myanmar should opt to enhance the existing policy instead of scrapping the FMR that had been implemented to benefit the people of the region. The organizations claim that the, the benefit of FMR on the Nagas living in and around the Indo Myanmar border far outweigh any negative aspect that could follow. It urged the center to take new initiatives 
to holistically develop the region by promoting tourism and cultural ties between India and India of Myanmar through Longwa, Pangsha and Mimi International Trade Centers ITCs. Further, as the ITCs had not seen any tangible developmental activities, the EMPO said the center should emphasize personal, human, social, economic and environmental development. The Kuki MP Manipur made a public clarification regarding the media report by various digital and print media houses claiming that a delegation of Kuki MP Manipur, KIM, Indigenous Tribal Leader Forum, ITLF Committee, Committee on Tribal Unity, Kotu, Zomi Council, Hill Tribe Council, HTC, and all tribe councils will be meeting the Home Minister and other MHA officers. It is clarified that Kuki MP has no knowledge of the same and will not be a part of the delegate to meet the Home Minister and other MHA officials. Such careless nature of the misuse of the name of an organization, whether of the media houses or the officials concerned of the Ministry of Home Affairs is uncalled and utterly deplorable. The humanitarian crisis in Manipur demands a profound effort than mere heroic. Media manipulations and political interests reads the report. Since May 3, 2023, the, Me the Meiji community has blocked all goods from entering Kukizo tribal areas, including essential commodities and life saving drugs. On February 1, 2024, Meiji upped their di dirty game by subjugating the only power line that supplies electricity to Lamka, Churichampur, and Persil to Kukizo tribal students, leading to a complete blackout for almost a week. This is community devoid of humanity. It is pertinent to note that before the ethnic violence, there were three lines with supply prior to Lamka, Churichampur, and Persia, but two were destroyed by Metis miscreants in June 2023. The remaining line was also sabotaged onto previous connections before the February 1st incident. Therefore, the ITLF want to remind the valley areas that power lines for the capital run through tribal hills, national highway through the main supply line for August entering the valley, goes through Kukizo areas, and most of the source of the water for the valley comes from the hills. The ITLF have not taken any drastic action despite being repeatedly attacked by many militants like Arambai Tengal and UNLF because of humanitarian considerations and to avoid a further escalation of the conflict which could cause a humanitarian disaster. Therefore, the ITLF have reached a point where any further instigations will be met with a befitting reply. The joint student body comprising of KSU, KZP, MSO, SSPP, TCSA, DSP, July, ZSF, and JSP issue a letter of condemnation which states that we, the joint students Lamka, strongly condemn the international damage to three power lines from the Valley side to Lamka, 33 KV Kaksing to Lamka, 33 KV Mirang to Lamka, and 33 KV Ningtokung to Lamka which has left Lamka and its surrounding areas without electricity for the past five days, beginning on February 1, 2024. The demise to electrical lines is a well-planned, deliberate move to harm all segments of our community. The student community and patients who live in the town area have been the most severely affected. Many of them are settled to take various levels of examinations, including central and state board exams, and have been unable to adequately prepare due to a lack of energy. The power has been disrupted daily life and caused untold misery for thousands of inhabitants, particularly the elderly, the sick, and the patients confined to the hospital's ICU unit, including some who rely on their oxygen masks to survive. Several, several critical services, including banking, medical care, internet access, and so on, have been hampered as a result of the unplanned power outage. While similar action to block electric city supply to the Valley districts may have been 
taken. Are people believe in upholding basic ethical standards even in times of ethnic conflict? The power outage is not simply a violation of our fundamental human rights. It violates our fundamental right to life under Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. As a result, the Zoyan Students Body Lamka has agreed to take every legal action to guarantee that individuals guilty for the disgusting act of breaking electricity lines be punished to the fullest extent of the law. Today at around 2 p.m., the Rural Women Upliftment Society, RWUS, handed over relief materials for 13 relief games at Tinopol District at RWUS Office Silmat, Lamka. Mangboy, Secretary Relief Committee Tinopol expressed his gratitude to the RWUS for their selfless acts and further expressed how the relief centers in the district needs help. The relief materials distributed today include 130 bags of rice, 65 bags of dal, 26 bags of mustard oil, 13 bags of potato, 65 packets of tea leaves, 13 bags of sugar, 6 and half bags of salt, 591 blankets, 65 mosquito nets, 1,300 soaps, 390 toothbrush, 260 toothpaste, 130 packets of detergents, 260 packets of undergarments. 130 strip of paracetamol, 65 strip of O2, 39 strip of azitrel, 130 strip of pantop 40mg, 130 pantop DSR strip, 260 bottles of enzyme, 130 antacid bo bottle, 195 bottles of multivitamin, 260 wildlife sachets, 273 strips of acetylophenase, SP and MR, 130 bottles of cough syrup, 195 packets of sanitary pads, 260 packets of baby diaper, 195 packets of nestrogen, 1 and 2, and 195 packets of cereal. Jandal District Relief materials were also kept available by the RWUS, but due to transportation problem, the relief committee will pick up the relief materials on Thursday. 591 families are under the care of Tinopol District Relief Committee and they are divided into 13 relief camps. 67 families are under the care of Chandel District Relief Committee and are divided into 3 relief camps. Voice on Rural Women Upliftment Society able to talk relief. I'm going to no palliates and deal thing, whom no same tading can umpe. Can do me, Emma, voice soon him, take no pal relief committee, high cutta. He to no item som to my he in landing in Ganhain boot say a strong China home martin pay home in she zompeta, Mihar Sale, a classitaka um high chunk we pay tading in a ring in chung la pay duty in. Uh, the All Manipur Christian Organizations made a press release yesterday, the 5th of February, expressing their regrets and deep concerns over the recent trends of incidents of Desecrations of religious sanctuary, holy and sacred sites of faith in Manipur. AMCO highly condemns the recent occurrence of disturbing events of defilement of judges and retaliatory destructions of temples and religious sites on faith of any community in a lace to the ongoing ethnic violence. The press release further states how AMCO reiterates that every religious and sacred place should be sought, be highly revered, and that our utmost reverence should be shown. The release also states that destructions of these religious sites 
are not only a violation of religious sanctity, but also an assault on our shared values of coexistence and mutual respect. AMCO urges both Meite and Kuki communities to refrain from further destructions of religious sites that further jeopardize peace and religious tolerance. AMCO called upon leaders and stakeholders of all communities to condemn this act and further urge the government to take appropriate and swift actions to prevent these actions and incidents that release further risks. AMCO appeals to all communities and tribes in Manipur to desist from destruction, desecrations, and hurting the sentiments of every religious people in the future. AMCO strives to maintain religious tolerance in such conflict situations and extend a fervent prayer to God for peace and normalcy to return in Manipur at the earliest time as possible. Reads the release. In regard to border fencing at pillar number 74, the media houses meet with Gangpizang village authorities today. Moret DC Network reporter Mumun Singh Son met with the village following authorities in which the authorities report their sufferings and discontentment since the beginning of the ongoing border fencing in the area. Village chairman Rochung Ahmar and Lunta Lungdim told the media that the border fencing has started since December last year. The village chief had did his best to stop the construction but due to the interventions of the army stationed around the border, he could no longer stop the construction. This border fencing had greatly affected the trade and commercial activities of the villages greatly and their livelihood had been greatly affected. This border fencing will affect not only the villagers of Ngang Pizang but also the community as a whole. So he further urged the concerned authorities to intervene in the matter and bring a solution to this unwanted border fencing since it had affected the people in numerous ways including keeping in contact with their families, staying on the other side of the fencing wall. The village authorities further says that this has greatly affected locomotions, especially in this time of war, and urge the concerned authorities to look into the matter in the RLS. Border fencing here, Lam Kai Lang Ho to ke ho matna la sam zi zong hin tin tu ni cha nin na to hi a chi la zing in fencing na to chi pa hi na. He chi a chi la zing in ele, he chi a chi la zing to ke ho na hi ho sunga ha sat gen te na i zan gai na tu ta ovam a hi la va le. Ho sung mi in na na tin thau vam ele Lam Kai Hoa ko na Palona, umam, palna umham di hong sit him cut in sail hap in langna. It is all thing let it's a border fencing he, a hong tea, zoma he let Hosunga, Gente has an eight and gay, hong tating din mona, num warm to house at him cut in sail hap you. Concern border fencing he, tun he, can hold two to let colour the pony cellar. Tung lama le carpe in. Till Antitoa. Ma se vunni cheng in chung te po cho bo zui a om lo nghe. Tu na hiyan dai siam tu rin sau khar la in ma la mek bok siya. He fin sing an siam na chung chang a hiyan tiang a an siam zi alani chuan. Ke ni khua chuan e le bar kan zan na kong chi sang sang a har sat na min ten te pia rama. Bar ma rama kan u le nao te la om te ta na po ni se la har sat na. Anthen thay do na ni ti hi kan mu in poi kan ti a. Hei hi a thay ram chon shoy tu ten. Arang la min min ron bo zui sak u la. Hala ya i fencing an siam a hi. Siam lo tu ra malak da na omani chon. Thay to min an chop pui tu rin. Kan shoy tu te kan an ngen du chew ni. Chu gai ni in gam pizang a chang a. Fencing chung chang a. Kan har sat to thay na pia rama. Hou tu te chung a kan an ngen du chew a ni ti hi. In the morning of Sunday at around 9 a.m. in Moray, mainly Moray Ward No. 1, the Assam Rifles claiming that the curfew has ended, they forcefully knock out the store key and illegally rob the store. And they stole numerous number of clothes. They are much worse than thieves. Robert Vaipi was also a victim who was residing alongside the road. He was beaten brutally. His wife, Coco, saw his husband being beaten mercilessly and ran towards him, though he was mercilessly tortured. 
It didn't result in that, since Robert Vipay's story is connected with his home. After the end of curfew, he opened a small portion of his home door, but that resulted in him to get brutally beaten. Another victim, Mr. Lambu, was also targeted be just because he was residing or migrated into a Mi village. And now he's scared to even open his door. Mr. Lambu used to open his door at Mori Bazaar Mete area, but according to sources, it was believed that he was compelled to shift to cookie dominated areas. In connection to this, Maria mothers and youth bear together the suffering faced by Mr. Lambu as he faced those brutal attacks just because he followed the order he was given. In relation to this mother, Maria mothers sowed their discontentment towards the Maria Assam rifles in front of their cane. To sow their displeasure, the women folks of Maria organized a seat in protest in front of the Assam Rifles came demanding compensations over the victim's family and the looted goods and the Assam Rifles asked forgiveness following the cookie custom. So Lysel P and the compromise was ended with that. Prime Minister Narendra Modi revealed plans for a substantial $65 billion investment in India's energy sector over the next five to six years, signaling a significant boost to the country's economic growth. Speaking at the inaugurations of the second editions of the Indian Energy Week, Modi highlighted India's rapid economic expansion with a growth rate exceeding 7.5%, positioning the nation's on track to become the world's third largest economy. Inviting global investors to participate in India's energy sector growth, Modi emphasized the country's ambitious plans to increase refining capacity from 254 mmTPA to 450 mmTPA by 2030. He underscored the unprecedented scale of investment pouring into the energy sector, affirming India's commitment to bolstering its energy infrastructure. As per Financial Express, Modi also outlined the nation's goal to double its primary energy demanded, demand by 2045 and increase the seared of gas in its energy mix to 15% by 2030. Alongside initiatives to boost ethanol blending in petrol to 20% by 2025, additionally, he reiterated India's commitment to addressing climate change aiming for net zero emissions by 2017, with surplus electricity generated from solar rooftop installations onto one crore homes to be integrated into the national grid. That's all from us tonight and we thank you for joining our program.